Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. On Roku, in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News, the vanity code is Dwyer Boxing News, one word, just as it is on iTunes. Right? Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I have to say that um, I was surprised that Chris Algieri went the distance against Manny Pacquiao. I personally thought that Algieri was going to be stopped. If there's one thing that I have to say about Chris Algieri, it's that he has the heart of a champion. Right? Algieri kept getting off the canvas. It was admirable. Let me say this. I understand that two of the um, canvas trips were slips, right? They look like slips to me, too. Let me just say this, though. The problem's the other four times he hit the canvas, right? If you're fighting a 12-round fight and you're hitting the canvas four times, chances are you're going to be well behind on the scorecards, and that's, in fact, what happened. Right now, understand, Algieri has great legs. That's apparent in this fight. Right, he actually looks like he moves around the ring better than Manny Pacquiao. Algieri has a lot of boxing skills. There's a lot of things that Algieri did that were impressive. Right, but Algieri style is really made for Manny Pacquiao style. Understand, boxing isn't a straight line. It's not better versus worse. It's really rock, paper, scissors, right? Different styles beat other styles and lose to other styles, right? Here, it just didn't line up for Algeria. Let's talk about the things that normally helps Algeria. Right? Algeri has a pretty good jab. Right? To go with great athleticism, great coordination, great movement in the ring. So Chris Algeri is accustomed to fighting a guy and then being able to, you know, if he needs to, go on his back foot, pump a jab, maintain distance. Right? Land the jab, have the jab set up the rest of his game counterpunch a guy who can't get inside because he's getting hit with a jab. Right here, the problem is, and let's blur sports for a second, the problem is he's fighting a guy with a small strike zone. Right? This is like a leadoff hitter in baseball. Let's say Ricky Henderson who crouches at the plate and who's already not the tallest man at the ballpark. Right? Manny Pacquiao is shorter than Chris Algieri. It's worse than that. You know, it's hard to hit, an or it's hard for an orthodox fighter to hit a southpaw with a jab if that southpaw has any game whatsoever because of the angles. Right? The southpaw sees the jab coming. They always say to beat a southpaw, if you're an orthodox fighter, you want to use straight right hands not left hands, right? If you're fighting out of an orthodox stance, your jab's your left hand. Pacquiao's a southpaw. That fact by itself made it more difficult for Chris Algieri to land his left jab. Then you factor in the reality that Pacquiao has great legs too. Right? Pacquiao has above average foot movement. Right? Both of these guys have above average foot speed. Right? The guys who can back away from your jab are the guys with the foot speed to do it. Pacquiao has the foot speed, and then you combine that with the fact that Pacquiao is shorter. And so the taller Algieri had to reach for him. And that's a problem. Right? That's a big problem. 
let me go one step further right there's a corollary for the to beat a southpaw you want to throw a straight right hand and that corollary is from the southpaw perspective to beat a right-handed fighter you want to throw straight lefts understand as Chris Algieri is reaching to get to Manny Pacquiao Manny Pacquiao is throwing his best punch and it's a straight it's very straight it's a straight left hand right so it's the worst possible combination for Chris Algieri he's fighting a southpaw who's shorter and mobile whose best punch is a straight left hand and of course Algieri can't find him with his jab right because Manny Pacquiao's doing a little bit of head movement and Pacquiao is shorter you know Algieri would be better off fighting a guy his size right then he can just throw the jab straight he'd be better off fighting a guy who's a righty not a lefty a guy who he has the foot speed advantage on here he didn't have that let me also point out too the styles are different Algeri's really a chess player Algeri wants to outthink you during a boxing exchange he wants to see what you do and then he wants to you know vary his attack to get the upper hand right but that's not what fighting Manny Pacquiao is all about understand Pacquiao is doing the same thing round after round Pacquiao is from the opening bell just trying to get close to Algieri to hit him with a very heavy straight left hand right to get inside Pacquiao will occasionally throw in fact almost all the time he'll throw a little bit of a right hand really for balance purposes I know Pacquiao gets a knockdown in this fight with the right hand but understand Pacquiao's right hand is really just to frame his left hand I would argue Pacquiao's right hand is underdeveloped even today you'll even notice there are times in the fight where Algieri times it so Pacquiao comes in throws a couple of right hands then gets hit by Algieri before Pacquiao can throw his lethal left hand so all Pacquiao is trying to do is to you know dodge your jab come inside throw a home run straight left hand right Pacquiao is not trying to have some exchange with you he's not trying to trade combinations with you so the fighters can figure out you know who knows what to throw when when Pacquiao is not trying to engage you at all all Pacquiao is trying to do is to come in and throw that lethal straight left hand right you'll notice here's here's what Algeri did that worked you'll notice that Algeri has his right hand up right this is reminiscent of the uh, fighter uh, wow I want to say Nishimura but I'm not sure if that was his name who fought Nanito Denier and kept his hand up the whole fight right Algeri has his hand up because he knows Pacquiao's KO punch is that straight left right he knows it so he has his hand up and he's rolling away from that left hand right if you watch this fight you're gonna see Algeri always moving away from Pacquiao's left hand right he's always going to the right away from Pacquiao's left You're, you'll also notice too that Algeri for much of the fights on his back foot right he's trying to 
dodge the left, move to a different location. Then as Pacquiao comes to him, throw combinations, force Pacquiao to box him. But Pacquiao doesn't fall for it. Pacquiao keeps changing the angle. And Pacquiao is coming in determined to knock out Chris Algieri. I haven't seen Pacquiao this front foot heavy in the first three rounds of a fight for several years. Right? Let me just say this. Timothy Bradley used a jab in the first fight to destabilize Manny Pacquiao. Whoever you thought won that fight, right? Let's at least concede that Timothy Bradley makes it 12 rounds without being intimately involved with the canvas like Chris Algieri was in this fight, right? First off, Bradley is short like Pacquiao. Right, so Bradley doesn't have to reach. There isn't the multi-inch height gap that Chris Algieri had to deal with. Right, Bradley, when he's throwing the jab, he's already in the strike zone Manny Pacquiao's in. Right, Pacquiao's strike zone probably looks big to Bradley because Bradley's looking right at it. He's not looking down at it. Right, so Bradley's able to throw a jab and come in on Manny Pacquiao. And Bradley, like Pacquiao, has above average foot speed. So even though Bradley sprains both ankles in that first fight, right, Bradley is hanging with Manny Pacquiao. Bradley also has the straight left hand blocked. Right, Chris Algieri had never faced this kind of sudden power before, right? This is different than Ruslan Provodnikov. Ruslan Provodnikov is right up on you throwing power shots, right? There's nothing surprising about Ruslan Provodnikov's power shots. You know he's a power puncher, right? He doesn't have the hand speed Manny Pacquiao has. Understand, while Ruslan's power is right here, Manny's power, which isn't based on hooks, it's based on a straight left, allows him to be farther away from you. Right? And Manny has the hand speed. I don't think people are remotely prepared to deal with Pacquiao's power. I think it's a revelation for most of the guys who are in the ring with him. Right? Shane Mosley, guy who never got stopped in his career until he met Anthony Mundine late, gets dropped by Manny Pacquiao relatively early. I don't think Mosley understood how hard Pacquiao hits. It's clear Chris Algieri did it. Now let me point out why I believe Pacquiao beats Danny Garcia but loses to Floyd Mayweather. One of the problems, well, first let me say this. Danny Garcia is a mid-range hooker. What that means is Danny's not coming in at a side profile. Danny's coming in pretty square with you, right? Danny's throwing looping punches, right? Manny Pacquiao is too mobile for Danny Garcia and throws too straight a left hand. I know as I make this video, Danny Garcia is unbeaten, and I'll concede. I personally thought Rod Salka was going to beat Danny Garcia. Right? Uh, if you go back before that, you'll see a video where I said I thought Mauricio Herrera was going to give Danny Garcia all he can handle. Right? Against Manny Pacquiao, I just think that Pacquiao hits too hard for Danny Garcia, and it's going to be too hard to find for Danny Garcia. Right? Amir Khan has hand speed, but he gave it away against Danny Garcia. He stood there and traded with Danny Garcia. Right? Manny Pacquiao, by contrast, would be outside, then would come in and would split the uprights. Right? Pacquiao throws straight punches. If Pacquiao and Garcia started throwing punches at the same time, 
right? Manny Pacquiao would get there first. Let me say this too. You know, Garcia is not a master boxer. I keep referring to this fight. No one seems to watch it. Ashley Theopane went the distance with Danny Garcia. Look at the first fight he had against El Torrible Eric Morales. Morales is holding his own for several rounds against Danny Garcia. Right? Garcia is not a master boxer. So what you would have would be Manny Pacquiao with superior balance, superior foot speed, right? You know, outside picking an angle, knowing that Garcia is going to be throwing wide shots. Keep in mind, Pacquiao is, you know, can bob and weave. So Pacquiao would be bobbing, making sure that he's a small target. Then Pacquiao would come in and throw a straight punch, straight left. We know it's going to be a left, right? And I believe he would take Danny Garcia out. Keep in mind, too, Pacquiao has fought for the 154-pound title and beat Antonio Margarito. Now, I understand there was a catch weight involved, but Margarito was physically a much bigger man than Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia has the belt at 140. Pacquiao would be coming down to 140. Pacquiao has a big punch as it is. If you track Pacquiao's record, and I know this is the first stoppage he got in several years. I believe his prior stoppage to this one was either Ricky Hatton or Miguel Cotto years ago. Right? But understand, when Manny Pacquiao was coming up through the lighter weights, he was a dominant KO puncher. He was laying people out like Gennady Golovkin. Right? Understand, Pacquiao has fought the bigger men physically than Danny Garcia. Right? I don't care what the height of the guys are. Right? Pacquiao is really physically bigger than Danny Garcia. Just look at his legs. Pacquiao has tree trunk calves. Right? Between those guys, I think Pacquiao hits harder than Danny Garcia has the faster hand speed, has the faster foot speed, throws the straighter punches, I think he takes out Danny Garcia. Now Floyd Mayweather is a different reality. Understand that I can sit here and I can say that Manny Pacquiao's best punch is his straight left hand. Right? I can say that. With Floyd, understand, Floyd's best punch depends on the situation. Floyd's a chess player. Floyd's not tall like Algieri, right? Floyd doesn't rely on volume, unlike Algieri, who left the pocket. He concedes the pocket early to Manny Pacquiao. Floyd would be able to beat Pacquiao from inside the pocket. Right? Understand, if you're fighting Mayweather, and Mayweather already knows that your Sunday punch is a straight left hand, he can do things to neutralize it just like Juan Manuel Marquez did after getting drilled three times by it in the first round of their first fight. Right? Marquez doesn't get dropped in fights three and four. If you look at the punch that hits Marquez and drops him in the second fight, it's at a weird angle. Right? The point is simply, Mayweather would know more about what Manny Pacquiao is going to do than Pacquiao would know about what Mayweather is going to do. Right? The other problem, too, is one of Mayweather's best punches. Right? One of his best punches is that straight right hand. He has a great left hook up front. But understand Mayweather also can throw a great straight right hand. Understand too that if you, you know, Pacquiao has a tell. He likes to touch you a little bit with his right hand. I did see him lead with the left hand at times in this fight. But that's the exception, not the rule. 
If Mayweather figures out the spacing, understand Mayweather's a guy who can do what's called a pull counter. Right? Have Manny throw his punch, right? Rather than dance away from the pocket, stay in the pocket, lean back, have the punch stop here. Right? Then come back with a straight right hand. The point is, when Manny Pacquiao comes in and throws that left, if you're there to counter it, Pacquiao's open. We know that from how he got stopped by Juan Manuel Marquez. Understand, Marquez has been in the ring with both men. I encourage people to Google Marquez's comments here online. He has no doubt that Floyd Mayweather beats Manny. I want you to also read the comments of Nacho Beristain, Marquez's trainer, right? In other words, Manny Pacquiao looks dominant when he's blowing out boxers like Chris Algieri. But when you deconstruct Pacquiao, you realize his right hand's not all that. I'm just being blunt. His right hand is not all that. His left hand, it's a straight left. Right? He'll throw hooks from time to time when he's in close. You don't have to worry about the hook taking you out. It's the straight left hand. So if you're in against Pacquiao and you're, you know, focused on that straight left and you're two-handed and you're defensively gifted, right, you can do things to give Pacquiao problems. Keep in mind, the last Marquez fight, as I like to remind people, the knockout is the second time in that fight. The second. Then Manny Pacquiao gets knocked down in the fight. Right? Marquez actually puts him on the canvas earlier. Understand, Marquez is loading up right hands for when Manny comes inside. Right? You know, let me say this too. Algieri has his hand here and he's blocking a lot of Manny's shots. Now, I know Manny is throwing heavy punches. I'm guessing that as Algieri looks at the video of this fight, he'll realize that if instead of constantly going back, right, when Manny throws a punch, if instead of being back foot heavy, if he would have stepped forward, after Pacquiao throws a big punch, he might have found Pacquiao wide open. Understand, Algieri was tall, didn't look like he's a dedicated body puncher. Mayweather is, and Mayweather can fight low, and you need to fight low against a shorter opponent like Manny Pacquiao. So let me say this. Dominant performance by Manny Pacquiao. If you take away the slips, Pacquiao still knocks him down four times. I'm surprised Algieri made it the distance, right? The knockdown, I believe it was in the ninth round. I thought that was going to end the fight. I don't know how Algieri got up from that shot, right? But if you look at a replay of this fight, right, you're not going to see a lot of Manny Pacquiao body shots. You're not going to see a lot of punches that bother Algieri other than Pacquiao's straight left hand. You're going to notice there are times where Pacquiao comes in throwing a right hand and Algieri catches him on the way in. I know the news is saying, hey, Algieri got blown out. Algieri had his moments, right? They're just hard to remember since knockouts cause amnesia, knockdowns cause amnesia. And you knew Algeri was losing the fight because he was hitting the canvas, right? Just understand, Chris Algeri remains a talented fighter. This was just the wrong style for him to go against, right? Pacquiao's a southpaw. Algeri didn't have the big experience, right? Uh, I don't believe fighting Rishon Provodnikov prepared him to fight Manny Pacquiao. Understand, I think Pacquiao beats Danny Garcia. Right, but I believe Danny Garcia is a little bit overrated. Understand, I believe Floyd Mayweather would beat Pacquiao in a way where the fight wouldn't be that competitive. Right? Those are my thoughts. Understand, this is really a lot of uh, 
you know, guessing, right? We don't know what happens in these fights until they happen. Anyway, dominant performance by Manny Pacquiao. I also congratulate Chris Algieri on showing a lot of heart and getting off the canvas several times. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for us here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.